uh, I would like to, to first thank thank you for for the for the startups uh, to to come again. Uh, I know it's been a, a tough day to pitch. Um, we have uh, talked with 25 companies um, and selected five winners. Um, uh, those winners they represent um, uh, four countries. It's two Finnish companies, one company from Slovakia, one company from uh, Romania, and one Israeli business. So we have a pretty good variety across the region um, to, to consider. Um, so let's maybe start with hope that all of the startups have joined. Um, and uh, let's maybe start with, uh, actually, maybe before we start, let's maybe introduce the panelists who are here uh, and, uh, and start with uh, you, Natalie. Can you please introduce yourself and... Um, then we can kick it off uh, afterwards with, 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 the, with the discussion. Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, inviting me um, in the second year of your uh, event. Uh, I'm Natalie Refua. I'm a partner at Viola Growth. Uh, we are a growth stage fund in Israel investing in uh, technology companies, part of uh, Viola Group, which is a $3.5 billion group managing different assets uh, all in technology investments thank you natalie um sandeep shall shall we hear your introduction please i think you're on mute we, we can't hear you um can you check if there's some settings in the in the Google hang in the if you're using Google or, or other browser that it has uh, picked up your your voice uh, or can perhaps try to log re log in through through another uh, browser? Uh, yes. Shall we? Shall we? For the time being, uh, George, please introduce yourself. Um, Absolutely. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm George. I'm a partner at Sequoia Capital. Um, I'm based in London, which is exciting because Sequoia has been around for 49 years of working with early stage founders, but we recently opened an office on the ground here in the EU. Um, I work cross stages with companies across a range of sectors. I joined recently from Revolut, where I was building a mix of consumer product. Great. Thank you so much. I see that Sandeep has uh, rejoined. Hi, apologies. Can you hear me now? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, apologies. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, uh, Sandy Bakshi, I look after European ventures for uh, Process, uh, Process Ventures. Uh, Process is the largest listed tech company in Europe um, uh, and uh, majority owned by Naspers. Thanks for having me again for the second year of this. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, I don't see John. John, are you, are you online? If you have joined, I see John, but let's, uh, let's, uh, shall we, uh, I, Alex, please give a few words since you're indeed, you're a member of the final, uh, as well. Yes, I'm Don. Thank you. I'm, uh, Alex Konoplasti. I'm general partner of Flashpoint, uh, also based in London. Uh, very glad to, uh, be participant of this grand jury alongside, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's such a great pleasure to have you all here and uh, welcome uh, our finalists. Uh, so looking forward to our great battle. Thank you, Alex. Um, well, if John will, will like Joe show, we will give him a few seconds to introduce himself, but um, not to wait. Uh, let's uh, kick off in the order of the panelists, how they presented. So the first panel was Vertical AI and um, Sami, please, uh, please take the floor. The floor is yours. Okay, so just a second, <clears throat> switching screens here. Uh, should be visible soon. If you can, yes, I think you can see the presentation now. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> okay, so let's start. My name is Sami Kaksunen, VP of Sales and Marketing here at Awake, and I'm, I'm pitching Awake for you today. Awake AI has created the biggest innovation in maritime logistics since the innovation of containers and steam engines. It's a digital revolution and we call it Smartport as a service. We are a team of close to 30 people leading this transition to sustainable intelligent maritime logistics. 
Most of our team has had Nokia and Rolls-Royce autonomous ships background, and the team has already proven track record in building disruptive software and solutions and platforms together. <clears throat> we have already established a thought leadership status within the industry, and as a proof, we received a Frost & Sullivan's Entrepreneur Company of the Year Award in maritime logistics category this year. The business challenge we are solving is that more than 90% of the world's goods are, trans are transported by the sea, but inefficiencies lead to unnecessary high cost and emissions. Ships can spend up to 40% of their time of the ports and sail up to 40% uh, empty. This inefficiency is caused because the relevant actors only know about 24 hours in advance what the port states will be like and the operations will occur. They still communicate using emails and phone calls and the planning is typically done with the pen and paper and in some cases with Excel. We can fix this by giving actors tools to plan their business and operations better and facilitating efficient communication across the entire supply chain. AWX AI-driven smart port platform is developed to bring together all maritime actors at the seaport and sea, uh, seaport and land side. We collect and process the data and use AI to deliver the added value for each involved actors. For terminal operators, we optimize the cargo operations. For port authorities, we maximize the throughput of the port. For ship operators, we enable just-in-time arrivals that reduces operational costs. And for cargo owners, we bring transparency to the cargo flow and better risk and disruption management. For example, we are performing hundreds of thousands of ETA prediction calculations per day, and we have built models that are up to 80% more accurate than the other mainstream service providers use today. Leverage on the platform, we have a developed smartport as a service application accessible using web browsers and mobile devices. This application includes industry leading bird planning solution and integrated AI predictions and optimization models. In addition to this uh, smart board application, we are also currently developing a marketplace for facilitating the buying and selling of port services when the port calls occur. Awake AI is differentiating from the competitor by being the only platform which offers multimodal prediction and optimization solution for the entire supply chain. Our competitors are mostly focusing on one or two actor point, uh, point of view. And our solution is also affordable, scalable, and the fastest smart port solution to deploy in any given new port community. And now this neutral and open platform is ready to be scaled globally. Being a platform company, we do not and cannot do everything by ourselves. So we have built, already built the ecosystem around our platform consisting of 100 partners that wants to deliver smart port solution on top of our platform. And the journey towards sustainable future has already started with our customers, so we are in production. Port of Rotterdam, biggest import in Europe, chose us as their digital development partner to enable smart and autonomous ships to make port calls in the future. We also launched uh, this bird planning solution with Port of Gothenburg, mm -hmm. the biggest port in the Nordics, and providing nationwide ETA port call timestamp service in Finland through FinTraffic organization. So far, we have raised 10 million US dollars for building a platform and ecosystem. And now we are in process of raising 3 million euros more by end of the year and for scaling the Awake platform and accelerating the adoption of smart port as a service in all ports and logistics chains globally. So that was our pitch today. So happy to take any, any question the presentation might raise. Thank you, Sami. Uh, the panelists, the floor is yours for questions. I'm um, happy to happy to kick off. Just a quick one for me. So I, I kind of have your deck here in front of me. What's your traction like? So how what's your like kind of customers revenue? Um, and I just kind of under, wanted to understand, you know, you've raised 10 million so far. Um, how have you deployed that capital? Thanks. Yeah, so, so we, we, we've started it uh, from Finland, obviously, we are Finland based. So in here, Finland, we have a 10 port communities or, or so. And internationally, we have deployed this to the five uh, port communities so far. So we are, uh, we, and, and, and we are more or less in the, in the uh, piloting and in the commercial adoption phase of these solutions. Thank you. But as uh, yeah, maybe elaborate that so to, so to to uh, for reference, uh, they 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 have been like market leaders or or competitors such as a port exchange, which has been deployed maybe around to ten ports as well. So considering our short period of time, I think we have been doing great progress in adopting these first first customers or partners. 
And when do you when do you think you'll start generating uh, revenue? So uh, we are moving into. We have been so far piloting and doing this. Uh, so we are starting to generate MRR now. So the port of Gothenburg, for example, is taking this into production. Uh, it actually last week. So now we are starting to kind of uh, generate the MRR revenues with the with the solution. And, and what the MRR today? Uh, uh, so uh, we are just starting it. So so now now we are starting to building it. We have had some uh, smaller smaller uh, customer cases, but uh, this will be the first product based MRR income. Thank you, Sami. Um, I guess we shall move on. Um, so our next uh, speaker is the winner of uh, horizontal uh, vertical. Um, it's it's called Calculate, a software platform to help you grow and raise more capital um, with growth metrics and keep your business um, humming. Um, so Nico, the floor is yours. Right, thank you very much. Uh, one second and I'll share my screen. Right. Can you see my screen and the Calculate see. logo here? Maybe quickly before you start, Nico. All right. Uh, so just, hello, just, everybody. Sorry, sorry, Nico, to interrupt. Uh, yeah. I see that John John has joined. Uh, John, maybe uh, give a couple words about yourself um, for, for for the startups and. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So so I'm a, I'm a partner at Tiger Global. Um, we're we're an eighty billion dollar investment firm based in New York, and uh, I I lead our, our our software investing practice and have been investing in software for for the last eleven years. Thank you, John. Nico, please, please proceed. All right. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Nico from Calculate. And Calculate is a financial analytics software for, for growth companies and, and modern digital businesses that helps anyone to be a pro CFO. Uh, here's the problem. Uh, financial data is really fragmented nowadays, and it's really hard to get a comprehensive picture of a company's financial situation. And that access to that financial data is really siloed and that usually leads to bad business decisions. Uh, the solution is automated financial analytics. Uh, Calculate imports data from all financial data sources such as Stripe, HubSpot, marketing platforms, payroll software, and, and so on, and creates a unique combination of growth metrics, financial reporting, industry benchmarks, and access to funding out of that data. Uh, our value proposition is, is pretty simple. We, we automate financial reporting in, in a short time, such as 15 minutes, and, and reduce a lot of workload uh, concerning that, that those financial reporting routines. Uh, we have a diverse and, and international team of 25 people, and our managing team has, has years and years of relevant industry experience. Um, I'll skip to... Uh, uh, the product features here. So basically the step one is that we create a, a basically a custom model reporting KPIs. Uh, it basically includes plug for that we have all the financial data of, of a company. The is that we produce IQ model for predictive analytics. It relies on industry data and benchmarks and, and includes machine learning, uh, which then leads to the third step, which is financial health and growth indices. This is a bit like a credit score, uh, but it gives an indication of a company's fundraising potential and fund, uh, financial health. Uh, so basically how interesting it is for financial institutions to lend money to this company. Again, this is based on also the financial data and, and benchmarking data. Um, the fourth step is basically giving access to financing uh, for, uh, for our, our customers. So we're basically ensuring maximum funding with minimum dilution. And this can be, for example, used as a white label uh, platform for, for venture lenders, for example. Um, market size, we've estimated that we have uh, more than 10 million potential customers and the addressable market is more than $30 billion. Um, here, we're basically, um, we're basically uh, raising our seed round of 45 million uh, euros to further expand our operations in the US and European Union. 
Uh, we currently have about 40 paying customers from, from the EU and, and the US, and we want to expand that now uh, with, with the help of the seed round. And we're basically based in, in Helsinki, Paris, and San Francisco. Thank you for your time. I'm Nico from Calculate. Nico, thank you very much. A very cool question. Um, obviously, financial some data uh, is uh, based in company systems on various standards and is of different quality and companies use different data in terms of their needs. Yep. Um, so how do you, you know, do you have this problem of data cleansing and uh, how do you think in general about unifying uh, data across businesses? Yeah, so that, that we usually come across uh, quite a lot. So we've, we've been helping our customers to clean that data. And, and we, for example, use uh, like software, like integration platforms like Plaid and Coda that actually clean that data for us. So we get quite a lot of structured data, categorized data already, and then we can process it much, much easier. But then uh, we, we give the users uh, a lot of lot of tools and flexibility to, to basically utilize that data and then uh, fine tune their financial model. We already do like 90% automated financial model for our customers, and then they, they can basically just fine tune to 100% with with our help. So you don't need to be a financial expert to to do that. Uh, hi, Nico. I have a question regarding the stage of uh, the software development. Uh, where are you in the process? And second question, uh, maybe relating to it as well, is whether um, you are able to identify the different um you know the details because each company has its own details on the kpi different uh, vertical different uh, mm. definitions um so how can you do it automatically yeah so basically to answer the first question uh so the first step is fully ready in in the uh, in the software we're currently working on the second and third step at the moment and we are now negotiating with venture lenders to get the fourth step done, the access to funding, as well. So we are working on the uh, all the all the relevant uh, parts of the parts of the products, and and then uh, the answer answer the second second question. Uh, maybe you could elaborate that that a little bit, uh, give an example, so I can I can um, give a better answer for for that. For each um, industry uh, mm -hmm. and different uh, pricing model, there are different KPIs. So if it's yeah. a SaaS company, it's different KPI. If it's a company that sells uh, rev share, uh, it's a different. If it's an industrial company or a, uh, automotive, so different uh, verticals have different ways uh, of calculating things. Yep. E-commerce, it's GMV and the net revenue. So uh, how do you um, yep. capture everything and able to identify the different uh, financials? Yeah. Great, great question. So, so basically, we started with SaaS uh, for for that reason. So, so we are fine tuning the model uh, for for SaaS right now. But then we already have an integration to Shopify as well, and and we actually selected only a handful of verticals like e-commerce, marketplace, app developers, and and SaaS for that particular reason. So, all all the digital business verticals that that want to calculate lifetime value, uh, revenue growth, customer acquisition cost, and they need forecasting and, and also uh, say cash flow forecasting, revenue forecasting. So, so we can just basically, you know, fine tune the lifetime value calculation based on the data source. For example, you know, if the if the revenue data is coming from it's slightly different calculation compared to Stripe data for SaaS, for example. But the actual model and, and the charts are, are the same. But then the, the back end calculation is slightly different. So we've already uh, done that for, for uh, a couple of different industries. So that's, that's the easy part, actually getting, getting uh, all that data from, from uh, like dozens of different data sources. That's the more complicated part. And we've already solved that part. Thank, thank you for the questions. Um, and, and Nico, thank you for the presentation. Um, so our third presenter. Uh, it's a Slovakian company. It's a, it's a deep tech company tackling the most uh, challenging problems of modern medicine with artificial intelligence and machine learning. So Martin, the floor is yours. Hi guys. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Can you see my presentation? 
Okay, great. So my name is Martin and I'm the co-founder of Powerful Medical. And at Powerful Medical, we're tackling one of the biggest issues in modern medicine, and that is cardiovascular diseases. Currently, cardiovascular diseases are the number one cause of death worldwide, and I'm going to show you why that is. The 12 lead ECG is basically the standard diagnostic tool to diagnose cardiac conditions. Uh, ECGs are being done everywhere. Every ambulance call out, they do an ECG. Most of the emergency room visits, they do an ECG. Before every operation, again, ECG. Everyone over 45 should get an ECG done once a year. But we also know that now nine out of 10 ECGs are not interpreted by qualified cardiologists. Rather, GPs, uh, nurses, paramedics, and so forth were only able to, to diagnose an ECG if it's normal or abnormal. Therefore, we've decided to create a tool where any uh, physician with an access to an ECG machine can diagnose cardiac conditions as a very um, experienced cardiologist. In order to pull this off, we've uh, teamed up with leading medical institutions from all over Europe and now Israel as well. And we have obtained about 10 million fully digital patient histories containing ECGs, blood tests, echo, post-operation report, outcome data, and so forth, some spanning back even 15 years. The PM Cardio Clinical Assistant is currently fully certified as a class 2B medical device in the, under the new European regulation. And we're also getting FDA approval very early next year. It's an app for iOS and Android where the doctor takes a picture of the ECG recording, making us compatible with any ECG machine and any other hospital infrastructure. We can then evaluate a diagnosis with really industry leading performance. And based on the diagnosis, ask a couple of follow-up questions. And these follow-up questions are in accordance to the clinical practice guidelines. And based on the answers, we're able to give treatment recommendations to the doctor on what to do next with the patient. Furthermore, of course, within the whole platform, the doctors can collaborate, share documents and chat in a very secure manner. And we're already making money on this. So insurance companies are paying us between five to 15 euros per patient scanned. And of course, all of our technology is available via API to be integrated in other medical software or other medical devices. Currently, it's about 50 of us with locations in Belgium, Slovakia, and Israel. And by the end of the year, we will have about 2 million in total contract value. We're currently raising a 5 million euro round with, most, with some of the money already committed. And regarding the team, it's mainly comprised of really world-class cardiologists, experienced entrepreneurs, and of course, very, very talented AI developers and medical researchers. Notable mentions are Professor Hatala, who is a member of the European Society of Cardiology, and Roy Ramon, who's helping Milita company and was previously a, par a partner at Intel Capital. So this is Powerful Medical. I'm Martin Herman. Thank you. And, you know, we might save your life one day. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. You're inspiring. Um... As the floor is yours, happy to. I'm on an awesome presentation. Thank you for sharing. Quick question for me on liability. Are you empowering physicians to use technology to make diagnoses? Are you providing recommendations as well? And if so, do you have any liability as a company for what that recommendation is? Yeah, so that's the thing. So part of our certification, we actually have to prove that we are either as good as the state of the art or better than the state of the art. And of course, you know, medicine sadly is imperfect. You know, the, the non-cardiologists have no idea about what they do on, with the ECGs. And we can, you know, among us, we can even say that we are beating the cardiologists using the AI diagnosis as well. And of course, you know, things might go wrong, but this is why we're protected by the uh, medical certification that we have. Yeah. So medicine somehow counts with the fact that even if a patient is being treated by the top, top, top specialists, he still can die. Yeah. And that's the same with medical devices, of course, and we have proven we are state of the art. That's why we have received the certification. So if something happens, you know, it's the same as with the rest of medicine. Yeah, the doctor proceeded in the absolute right way as got dictated, you know, by the guidelines using state of the art technology. Sadly, our, our uh, understanding of medicine today is not good enough. And I think AI is the technology which will help us really make medicine an exact science because it has the potential. Yeah. What, what what is the uh, the competitive landscape look like today, and, and how do you think it'll evolve over time? So competitive landscape today, we have 
three categories. Let's say we have the device manufacturers themselves. So we have GE, Philips, and all of the big guys who will rather wait for us to develop it and, and try to buy us out. Then we have research teams. Yeah, of course, you have research teams where they publish publication, you know, 12 lead AI diagnosis, and they validate it on, you know, 20 ECGs, whereas we validate, you know, on 2,500 to 4,000 patients per diagnosis. So those, you know, it's still making a publication and getting to a fully certified product in the hands of doctors are two completely different worlds. And then we have the startups. We have the startups probably, you know, uh, our biggest competitor is Cardiologs from France. To this day, they have raised about 62 million. And those guys are focusing on 24 hour ECG analysis. We have Cardiomatics, might have recently read about them. They raised about 3.2 million. Uh, however, the setback with all of these other startups is the compatibility issue. Yeah, you go to a hospital and you have a machine from GE, Philips, Siemens, you know, even different models from the same manufacturer, and it's very hard to be compatible with all of those. And this is ultimately where we beat all the other startups because we can walk into any hospital. Everyone nowadays has a smartphone with a camera. We can digitize the printouts. Of course, we can take a picture of the screen as well, digitize that. If you're able to tap into digital, you know, fantastic. Of course, we're going to be doing that. But from a convenience perspective, uh, it's not realistic. Yeah? You have examples of other tech startups who kind of played on the, the, the bet that let's integrate our AI technology into the existing stuff. And then you start to realize that every hospital uses a completely different system, completely different ECGs and, and devices, and the manufacturers just won't let you to, to integrate with them as easily. Martin, and we know that selling doctors and hospitals is not easy, right? So um, what is your go-to-market strategy and how do you um, do it in a scalable way? Oh, you would be very surprised. Uh, you would be very surprised. This is a product that I think a lot of a lot of people realize they need very much. And let me explain. Yeah? So first of all, we have this big push from insurance companies where they're trying to handle as much of the patients as possible in the primary care level where it's cheap rather than the secondary care level where, you know, if you get referred to a cardiologist, just, you know, opening the door to the cardiologist office is something that costs the insurance company 100, 200, maybe 500 euros in some countries, yeah? That's obviously a bigger big problem. So we actually have active insurance companies pushing this value. Then we have the paramedics who realize the value on their own, yeah? And of course, you know, in most of the countries nowadays, you have a remote consultation, uh, basically diagnostic code, and digital health codes. And why I'm saying this is the fact that, okay, we, you know, the, the, the insurance company will pay the doctor under a digital health code to use a digital tool. The doctor will get 10 euros per code. Yeah, in most of the countries, maybe even more. And, you know, we split it in half with them. So there's kind of a revenue sharing model with them. And there's this great thing that, you know, is, is going on in a lot of countries, but we actually have a very good example of how this works in Belgium. Where, for example, the, the, the hospitals in Belgium realized that if they give to all the GPs who refer the patients this app, then before the GP sends the patient, they can check with the cardiologist whether this is a cardiac a patient, you know, indeed. And both of and, and they can do it with the app. Yeah. So they share the report. The cardiologist replies, yes, send this patient. The GP and the cardiologist can both charge 20 euros for remote consultation. Plus. Now the cardiologist has the guarantee that the patient who walks in is not some grandma with indigestion with whom he says has to spend an hour time, but only can charge the insurance 100 euros. He now knows that the patient who comes to his clinic will be a cardiac patient where he can charge 500 for the same hour. So really, I think this is something, and regarding the go-to-market strategy, you know, there is a gorilla aspect to it. There is this digital marketing aspect to it. And honestly speaking, you know, we have a closed, uh, beta with 1,500 users with zero marketing budget, and we have about 5,000 more now signed up for the you know actual release open beta version, which is going to launch next week. So I think for us as a company, we're very excited to to you know finally be able to open the the beta and and really think that we'll be able to collect a ton of users, even probably double what I yes. what I had on the slides. Thank thank you, Martin. Um, we shall we shall move forward. Um, uh, the next presenter is Voxikids. It's a Romanian company, uh, software helping to develop language skills to play. Uh, Anne Maria, please, please, the floor is Hello, yours. everyone. Nice to meet you all. So, I'm uh, Anna, and I'm the co founder of uh, Voxikids. 
So we started back in 2019 when we just searched the market and we found out that uh, speech therapy is a bypass uh, niche uh, from most of the startups. Also, we found out that 34 million children have hearing problems and language problems and also difficulty in uh, learning. Or that they don't have the chance to work from home, especially in the COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, situation. So we uh, firstly launched on the market the Voxy Kids app, which uh, is an app that allows children to exercise from home uh, between sessions. And in, in uh, January 20, uh, 2021, we launched the digital clinic, which allows every speech therapist to connect with patients no matter the distance. In this way, we allow older children to have access to uh, special education uh, no matter where they are uh, located. So what's special on the uh, Autopoxy Clinic, which is a SaaS platform, is that we are uh, uh, in, having over uh, 1,000 special exercises developed with speech therapists from Romania, UK, and uh, US. And to our clinic, uh, all the speech therapists are uh, increasing their revenue, are having more time for themselves, and can manage uh, any clients they have through our platform. Of course, all the clients of a speech therapist can have homeworks, homeworks or um, spend time uh, between speech therapies to um, uh, exercise at home. In this way, they are recovering more faster. So Voxy product uh, today are looking like this. On the Voxy Kids app, we have 14,000 downloads right now, uh, from which uh, over 8,000 user accounts were created in the last uh, 12 months. We have 5,000 active users, from which uh, over 1,000 are uh, 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 daily users. And 50 speech therapists still are still using Voxy Kids app as a material support in their offices. Meanwhile, we uh, launched Voxy Kids uh, Clinic, which was tested with over 30 uh, offices, speech therapy offices. And right now we have over 50 offices that are using Voxy Clinic. One uh, pilot test done in uh, Houston, US, and we started a collaboration in uh, UK. Also, we're having a waiting list of over 300 uh, speech therapists uh, from uh, Romania, which are waiting for our um, end of September for a new launch on a vaccine clinic. Our business model is a B2B2C. So uh, from the B2C, we are uh, charging the parents uh, uh, around 11 euros per uh, month, but they can get to 73 euros per uh, year. And of course, for the vaccine clinic, we are charging right now just the, the B2B, uh, B, because most of the features we have are addressed to them to help them perform uh, better speech therapy uh, in online, but also in the office. The competitive uh, landscape for us uh, looks uh, pretty well because uh, most of our products out there are either uh, targeting mobile apps and are addressing just to B2C and the other ones are uh, B2B SaaS platform, mostly from UK and US, which are uh, mostly used in schools or kindergarten, and they are not so accessible to the large public. Our team ha uh, uh, has over uh, uh, 10, mem 10 members, from which uh, three of them are speech uh, therapists from UK, uh, Romania, and uh, US. We uh, have uh, received until now two rounds of investment for, uh, from Gapminder BC, Cleverage BC, and uh, uh, Business Angels from uh, Romania. And we are looking forward to uh, new rounds of investment. Our mission is to educate children from, uh, um, from uh, the beginning of the process. So in this way, together with our investors, we can help tomorrow more children than we are today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marie. Uh, please, the judges. Yeah, can I can I ask a quick question? First of all, thank you for the uh, presentation. And 
clearly a clearly a, a, a problem that needs solving. So appreciate that. Uh, one one question from my perspective, just slipping through. So uh, actually, two questions. One, do you create your own content? Is that something that you do in house? And second, um, how big do you think this market really is? So how big? I know you have a number in your deck of uh, I think it's. 34 million people, but presumably there is a whole mishmash of languages that are there and kind of ability. To, so how real, how big do you think this really can get? Uh, thank you. So uh, the addressable, the top addressable market from Romania, UK and the US, the first market we are targeting, it's over 8 million uh, uh, on uh, B2C, children that need a speech therapist right now. Uh, regarding the content creation, yes. At the beginning, we are creating uh, a bunch of content that can be used right away. And in 2022, we'll put on the market some templates so every speech therapist can create his own content. So we will not be the uh, content creator anymore. They will be able to create their own content. But uh, at the beginning, we help them with uh, this content because there is uh, no place on the market where you can use a digital product online and gives you access to special content dedicated to children with special needs. We have a lot of content for us, uh, for children with no uh, no other um, health or other related problems, but no educational content for children with special needs. This is why we are helping them in the first in the first stage. Got it. Thank you for your question. Um, maybe I missed it, but I'm uh, trying to understand. Is this only used uh, for uh, distance learning, e-learning online, or also um, in the clinic themselves, in itself, sorry? Yes, it's both ways. We can use it online, and we can track uh, every child progress during uh, uh, a period of time. Or you can use it in the office uh, with, uh, with the same children, or we have also um, adult patients that are or adult clients that are using the platform due to the due to some strokes or other related problems that made them need uh, speech therapy so it both in both in online and uh, offline thank you anna um we shall we shall proceed forward um so thank you our, so much our last but not least is a company from Israel representing Startup Nation. It's uh, BuildBan, um, a memo-powered software development acceleration platform. So, Maxim, the floor is yours. Hi. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Okay, so let me introduce myself first. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder of BuildBan. We are creating a software development acceleration platform that uses machine learning to improve automation performance. Uh, for the previous few years, there was a clear rising trend on uh, uh, automating, automating everything that is related to software development. Uh, every part of the software releasing gets automated. So for example, when developer creates a new feature, before it could reach a customer, this feature needs to be built. It needs to be automatically tested, reviewed, and only then it gets to the market. And because it takes a lot of time, each minute the team is waiting for this process to finish means one less minute developing the product. And even if developer is not waiting for the result to complete and moving to another feature, it still introduces a constant context switch because developer has to jump between tasks and it doesn't help. So what we have created is a robotic concurrency that acts as a plugin to the most popular DevOps tools that instead of running sequentially, it makes them run concurrently on the cloud. And by automatically adapting to each scenario with the help of machine learning, it shrinks the execution time from hours to minutes. It all comes without changing the tool set, without changing the code. It's all the same, just better performance by five to 10 times. Okay, so how we do it? Uh, our algorithm analyzes the release history of the company and con complexity to find bottlenecks and understand how we can detach one part from another to run it concurrently on the cloud. And uh, 
by using it and by understanding uh, each method individually and utilizing power of the Docker and Kubernetes, it allows us to bring very outstanding performance. I will give you an example. This is a typical use case of a EPUM company. This is a case that is, I believe, widespread across the, uh, the whole uh, development environment. Uh, EPUM is a software house with over 40,000 developers, and this is a use case for one of their projects. So you can see here that uh, to compile a single project, test it, uh, perform automatic code review, it took them 41 minutes to finish. And after integrating our solution, it all fell down to just eight minutes, like I said, without changing anything in the code. And this is cases widespread in the industry. So following the result here, if we elaborate it over the year, that instead of wasting 2,000 hours, it, the, the number shrinked to 300 hours. So the release time means almost 10 extra work months for, for the team, for a single developer. We have a couple of a couple of paying customers that use our solution in production every day. Uh, and uh, I believe that's it. So I'm happy to answer the questions. I see a question on capturing value. So if you're making some of the most expensive people inside of technology companies five to 10 times more productive, it's obviously creating a huge amount of value for the organization. How are you thinking about pricing for that? Okay, first of all, it's not five to 10 times more efficient for a developer. We're making them more efficient by 10% because it's where improving automation. And uh, we have ROI calculator that helps with that. But uh, the average pricing here is coming from the fact that we're charging $50 per month per developer. It actually meets the ROI the company is getting, I mean, direct ROI, it's just financial benefit, but the benefit of for improved, I would say, capacity of the developer overlaps this number. So anyway, this pricing is, uh, is covering the, the feeling of, of the industry. Max, and obviously, you know, this is a, a problem that is everyone is uh, focusing on. So uh, nothing, nothing really new here. So uh, how do you like differentiate yourself versus like competition and um, what are your okay. edges there? All of our competitors, uh, I mean, most, I will split them into groups. Uh, first group um, emerged a few years ago. They are taking an open source solution dedicating to boosting the performance and making the business out of it. It limits them within a certain niche. So for example, they're focusing on mobile development, they're focusing on C++, financial sector, and et cetera. For, for us, we're covering the whole market instead. Our solution allows us to support every possible technology on the market. And what's even more important, we're not limited by the network performance. And the network performance is the downside of the most solutions on the market. So, and because of that, we can utilize cloud potential to the max. Thank, thank you, Maxim. Uh, just so we stay on time, uh, I think that was the last of it. Uh, judges, you have a link in your calendar. Um, so it comes the most exciting part of the competition. Um, you have a link with five companies there. Uh, please rank them from the first to the last uh, in, um, in terms of whose, whose pitch you like the best. Um, and then click Submit. Um, and uh, uh, we will share the results in real time. Just one second. I hope you guys can see my screen. So the votes starting to kick in. There's been basically two people that have voted already. So there's another three votes that we're looking for.
There's another two votes. We're still missing. Now it's intriguing. So the last vote will be the decisive one. Whoever hasn't voted yet, please go ahead and do that now. Natalia seems to be sitting there and thinking, okay, what do I do now? Yes, and now I think the votes has been locked and, you know, with a slight margin, um, uh, it's, it's Bill Ben. Uh, I would like to congratulate you, Maxim. Um, you were the winner of Summer SAS 2021. Um, and uh, uh, just to, to, before, you know, people jump off, I would definitely like to say thank you to, to all of the panelists and for taking the time uh, today um, and all of the startups and all of the sponsors, Leighton Watkins and, and Belasco, who have been um, assisting us to promote this event to the global audience of a, more than a thousand people. Um, it's been a ride today to hear so many great pitches and, and ask them questions asked. Um, and, you know, for the portfolio SaaS prizes, just to announce those. So Chili Piper, uh, one of our portfolio companies is, uh, is going to offer um, going to offer uh, CRO sessions uh, in how to scale the company. Um, Commit, one of the leading recruiting platforms, helping uh, high growth companies to hire, um, will be offering their, their software suite for free for, for the next year. Uh, and Growbots, an outbound sales automation platform for sales and prospecting, also will be offering the software for free for the next year. Uh, and all of the participants who have submitted their decks we will be sharing an AWS link according to the uh, able dose activate to give you 10,000 worth of free credits. Um, and the winner will get uh, 25,000. Uh, and, uh, it's been, it's been an honor to, to host, uh, today. And, um, thank you all for coming and see you next year. Thank, thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.